Nope, they'll see me. I was wondering if they'd be able to see me from that distance, and they absolutely will. No, wait, I'm this guy. Don't shoot at me. Look, I'm now this guy. No! See, this is the best part about xCloud, uh, other than, you know, just kind of playing around. I am... Um, it's the morning, workday morning, that after I finish up some stuff, I'm like, you know what? I deserve a treat. I am going to play some Hitman. And it's fired it up in the browser. I wanted to get murdered in Hitman and do be a terrible, terrible Hitman. Got it. Oh, uh, All right. So now Mr. Ritter is upstairs. But working hard to become this guy. That way I can use him for taking out Ritter. But now the last thing is, is I need to poison him. <clears throat> Oops. Mr. Norfolk, I do apologize for these. Uh-oh. Someone's seen me. In general, I think this has been good. Like, the quality hasn't been... It's not, like, full quality. Um, 60 frames, I mean, I'm definitely getting smooth playback. But, um, a lot of artifacts. But it was... The biggest thing was I was able to play right now without having to go downstairs, without having to turn on the TV, without having to go through that whole thing. My wife's doing homeschool downstairs right now, so it's not like that was a possibility anyway. So it was nice because I was able to play right now for like a half hour, take a break, and then go back to work here in a minute. So I call this a success. So I think this is the ranty portion of the week being back at vlogging uh, i've been thinking a lot about the metaverse or the the, the term the metaverse uh, which is an interesting uh branding that facebook has gone through and a uh, good job on the marketing department to be able to do that but i think a lot of people are starting to really s see through the bullshit that facebook does so anyways i've been thinking a lot about the metaverse because in particular it's been in the news with Microsoft acquiring Blizzard Activision and a quote from Sacha Nadella saying that this would also help fuel metaverse type work, Go, putting more work into creating that kind of life. And as someone who's in marketing, recognize a lot of the trends that marketing has been going through for decades and that other places like content or media companies and also gaming companies have gone through as well. And I know there's lots of consideration on what the metaverse could be for it, for being a part of our lives going forward and what it's capable of doing. But from the marketing perspective, it's obvious that it's nothing new. They're not going to introduce anything new. It's just going to be the same thing that you already do, just in digital. They're not going to create anything new. There's not going to be any new processes. There's not going to be any new ways of interacting with people. There's not going to be any new experiences. They're just going to create digital versions of the real world things that already exist. So let me explain how that applies to marketing. Digital marketing has been a thing for 25 years, right? Being able to place ads on websites, in videos, on social media. But remember, they are digital versions of the analog marketing that was already being done. They're not new ways of marketing to people. They are banner ads and ad placement inside of websites, just like you would through a newspaper or magazine. Because the people who are creating that that's what they already knew. So if I just take this display ad that I paid for in a magazine and I just copy that over to our digital marketing strategy, boom, done. 
If I take this banner ad that I had in a newspaper and put it on a website, I'm done. If I take this 30 second commercial that I made for TV and just try and transfer it over to YouTube, and that's what it is with the metaverse. They're not going to create anything new. It's all just going to be to sell you the same stuff you already own or that you already do in physical space. Meetings. Microsoft has already talked about how meetings could be taking place in the metaverse, but they're around a table, a conference table with digital versions of you with someone giving a PowerPoint and someone being able to write on the whiteboard. There is no new way of being able to handle the meetings. They're still the same fucked up shitty corporate meetings that we all have to attend two or three times a day. It's just instead I sit at home instead of in your office, which is whatever like that. Fine. I guess that's cool. Instead of just being able to do it through chat or an email or, or some other way for us to be able to communicate and work. It, it doesn't allow asynchronous work. Async is really what people should be aiming for. But instead we all need to be in the same space at the same time to talk about the same thing. Just instead of being there physically in person, I'm going to make a digital version of the exact same shit that it was for physical. We still sit around the same stupid conference table. In fact, the room designs will be the same generic, stale, boring office conference rooms that you already have in the office that you don't want to go to. Then Walmart puts out a video about how it could be shopping in the metaverse. It's just you pushing a shopping cart down the regular store aisles. It's nothing new. It's just replacing what you already physically do in the real world, just making a digital version of it. Why would I want this? Why do I want a digital version of the same shit I already do? This is an opportunity for companies like Ikea to sell you an end table in the physical world and then buy it again in your digital world to put in your digital home. And that's where I'm really coming to is that these things exist only to sell you the same stuff that you already buy. In marketing, you already buy these TV commercials. Why not also buy these YouTube commercials? You already buy physical furniture, buy the same furniture in the digital version. I wear an, a hat every day. Don't you wanna also buy the digital hat that would go with your avatar in the metaverse? There's other companies that have figured this out already. Media companies, for example, they sell you the same, they sold you Star Wars on VHS and four by three format for your tube TV. Then they sold you VHS and widescreen. Then the DVD comes along and this four by three, remember back in the day, there was four by three aspect ratio DVDs because you didn't, not everyone had a widescreen TV. So you may have had a DVD player, but on a widescreen. So they sold you the same copy. Then they make the ultra widescreen edition because you finally got that TV. So now you bought it four times, right? Then the HD DVD comes out. Oh shit. See, I didn't even talk about LaserDisc. It's going to skip right over a LaserDisc. We're going to go straight to HD DVD. Then Blu-ray comes out. Oh man. I mean, I, I got to get the Blu-ray version. That's even a higher resolution for a Blu-ray. So I have to buy that one again. And then the 4K version comes out. And then the streaming version comes out. You just keep buying the same shit again and again and again and again. The same thing, the gaming industry has already figured this out. They want to sell you the same game again and again and again. You bought it for your original Xbox, then for the Xbox 360, then the Xbox One, then you bought the PC version, you bought the version for the Switch, and then you bought the mobile version. You just kept buying the same game over and over and over again instead of being able to, you know, move along with the times as formats have changed. I understand work goes into it, so they need to recoup some of those costs, but that's definitely designed from the beginning that the opportunity is there to sell you the same stuff that you've already bought before, just in the digital version. And that's why you see these examples where they're just replacing the digital version of what you already do in the physical world, because they have an opportunity to be able to sell you the same stuff again and again and again and again without them having to actually change without Walmart having to actually change the shopping experience and how their stores are without Microsoft and corporations changing async to asynchronous work 
and making it so that you don't have to be in the same space in order for a meeting. Same thing with conferences, concerts, uh, movies. This is all stuff that already exists to give you a digital version of the of what it's like in the real world. And I understand that for accessibility, there's some benefits in that. If you are <laughs> to the middle of a pandemic and you don't want to go down to the theater to watch a movie, you can watch it in VR to give you the theater experience, maybe with other people, other real people who would be in the theater with you. There's absolutely an opportunity for it. But this isn't world-changing technology. It's just replacing what already exists. And that's all that digital has done. Everything on the internet just created a new version of the physical thing that had already existed. There are very, very, very few things that have actually become new in the digital space and not that they were just this thing that existed in the real world. And so I made a digital version of it and I could sell it for a billion dollars. So I don't, I'm not excited about the metaverse because I'm not excited about buying things multiple times. And that's not even including uh, vendor lock-in or switching costs and all these things that make it a proprietary space so that you can, you know, the best place to do it in is only this one space. But if you want to go to this other one, oh, you're going to need a different headset. You're going to need a different account. Your stuff that you bought, those digital things that you bought for a third or fourth time don't apply in this new universe. You know, my Fortnite skins don't transfer to Minecraft and my Minecraft world doesn't transfer to my meta Facebook met metaverse thing. There are all these different islands that I exist in and I just have to pick one that happens to be where all my friends already exist. And that's not including any of that stuff. It's just the capitalist view of what metaverse is, which is just to get you to buy the same stuff that you already own while not creating anything new, just selling you what you already do in real life. So end of the ranty day. All right, now I just, I just gotta make it out. Bye. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Say bye. <laughs> it's over. Oh no. Oh no. Ah! Oh, you did? Oh, cool. Got the key. She's okay. got it. I'll bring it over here. I wanna like Alright, I'm gonna I'll go get that chest. Oh yeah. Okay. It's hard to carry. All the time we played this game, this has been the total mystery is whatever's in this chest. We got it! A pirate skin. Oh you get We unlocked the pirate skin. What? Oh, uh, yeah. You I'm did it. I'm stuck. It was true. Like, there was actually something inside of it. The, look, there's another chest. You can oh, yeah. Like, so them. what else you could open? Yeah, there's going to be a new there. I wonder if it's like some shortcut to getting the, like, unlocking all the yeah. skins. I spent an inordinate amount of time yesterday working on a TV antenna. We are really, really far away when it comes to antenna signal from the Seattle market. Uh, being outside of Olympia with the trees and the mountains and it's a distance. So I've tried for a long time to try to get the antenna to work. For a period of time, I got two channels. So I was hoping, really hoping I could get those two channels, one of them being Fox because of um, we canceled YouTube TV and I want to be able to get football for my son for the championship games or for, for the playoffs in the championship game. And Fox is the only one that doesn't have a streaming service. And I don't feel like paying for YouTube TV like $80 a month or some other streaming TV service like $80 a month. I know there's some cheaper ones out there, but I just launched two businesses, I quit my job to work on my own business. We're cutting every bill that we can. So I spent a long time yesterday working on the antennas and no luck. 
couldn't get any signal for a period of time. I got Fox for like a blip, but that was about it. I tried all kinds of different stuff, all kinds of different locations, elevation. I think I'm going to have to change the antenna type that I have if that's what I'm going to do. Um, but I don't know. I'm kind of giving up hope on the antenna working. I, um, I wish I could get it because when I lived in Arizona, we had great service. Now we were in, you know, actual Mesa or, you know, in the main city, <laughs> the main metropolis area. So we were able to get like 60 channels from the antenna. Now we're so far away that it's really, really hard for us to pick anything up, which is what I loved about Lowcast. And it's so awful that they're out of business now because all I want is the local channels. And I don't want to subscribe to a huge streaming service to get it. But it is what it is. We'll see what, what, what we're able to do. Um, I'd love to be able to get it and drop it into Jellyfin and then have that be the spot where we'd be able to stream it around the house. Uh, and then if there's anyone <clears throat> outside of the house that lives in my local area here, friends and family, that might also want access to that. So yesterday was a bust. Kind of upset about that. Today's project, though, is working on this. This is the Razer Kishi, Kishi gamepad with a Nexus 5X inside of it. I want to turn that into just a permanent, portable game streaming setup for me. That way I can do Xbox Game Pass, Xbox in-home, and Steam in-home streaming, all to that device, without actually putting my phone into it. It's just a dedicated device that does those things. Like there's a whole plethora of those types of devices that are on the market right now um, that are or will be coming to the market. Lots of Kickstarter, Indiegogo, early adopter type programs where they're putting an Android phone all built together with a gamepad, not two separate pieces, but it's all together. And I love that setup um, because there are some games on Android that you can play, but then also just stream it, especially around your house. If you have a gaming PC or you have a, a console, you can stream it around your house. So because I work from home most of the time, I am home, I'm staying home, streaming around my house, not a problem. So I'm gonna play with that, trying to get it set up. I'm supposed to be able to do pass-through charging on it. So I'm gonna see what, see how it does, see how the battery holds up. See how uh, I like having it just always on like that. How long would always stay on? This is the perfect project for an older Android device too, because it's not having to do anything else but stream games around the house. So it uh, just needs to display it. It's a device that I can extend the life of without having to buy anything new. So I'm going to play with it today. We'll see how it goes. So an update, like midday update on how it's going, building that um, like handheld console with my old Nexus 5X, which still works great running Lineage OS, uh, it's Android 8.1, so it's older, which is why I don't use it as my regular everyday phone, but uh, more than capable of being a minor gaming device. Obviously, mobile PUBG, not going to work great on this phone. But I'm streaming most of the games, and I'm doing it across the house, um, using uh, mostly from my Xbox or from X Cloud and from Steam. So it has gone pretty well. I mean, here's the Razer gamepad. And uh, let's plug it in. Stretch it out. Up and over. And uh, everything works well. Like, I don't have any complaints about how well this works. Um, the, uh, you can see, here I am in the Steam link. And uh, everything works fine. Um, in fact, the streaming quality works really well, uh, and I'm going Wi-Fi to Wi-Fi, which is often considered to be not the way that you should do it. The computer that you're streaming from should be wired, and then this, uh, the mobile device that you're playing with it should be wired as well. The original Steam Links were wired. Wi-Fi has obviously gotten better. Um, I have a pretty, I feel pretty decent network. I'm getting 95 megabits per second in in-home streaming on the test here. So uh, it does just fire right up. And um, I've been playing a lot of games this way, and I really enjoy it. 
This system has worked well too with having this dedicated device. That way I still have access to my phone throughout the day. And then if I want to play anything, I can just um, pop onto here. So that has worked well. The in-home streaming for Xbox has also worked well. Uh, so you can do xCloud, which is the full game streaming from the cloud. That works fine. I don't really do that that often, though, because um, the games that I've been playing are actually installed on my Xbox. And the Xbox app works on Android 8.1 on this Nexus 5. Uh, a little slow to get started, but once it gets started, it's just streaming the uh, the game from the console. So when I go through and uh, the entire menu inside of the Xbox app works with the gamepad too, which is good on them. So um, I don't have any uh, complaints about how well that it has worked. So if I go to my console and I go here and remote play on this device, and then it just works across my network. This Xbox is hardwired because it's in my living room right next to the router. So this will, uh, this is hardwired. It does play good. Same as streaming from my PC. I'm the same kind of quality, uh, same kind of experience, N uh, very minimal lag. I'm sure if I was a much bigger gamer, much more enthusiastic, hardcore gamer, I would notice the input lag, but uh, I don't because I don't play those kind of games and I'm not that serious of a gamer. I just like to have fun. It's the kind of game that puts stuff on easy. And I talked about it in a previous video, one of my vlogs before, where I had been playing xCloud. So you can see everything just works in here. And uh, um, so, like, works good. Dedicated device. Everything works great. I have no complaints. I do have a problem, though, and that will throw... A, uh, an issue with using this as a dedicated gaming device, uh, similar to like a uh, Nintendo Switch, where it's just always on, and you just turn it on and go jump in and start and start playing. Well, the apps work great. Where I'm having a problem is is that with the Kishi, there's a, a USB C port on it. This is charging pass through, no data, charging pass through only, but it's not working. If I plug the, if I plug in everything on my USB-C charger, um, no charging. It doesn't register that there's anything plugged in. The gamepad, the light will come on for the gamepad, but it's not doing any charging pass through. So that's frustrating because I would love to just leave it 100% set up. Phone always in the gamepad. I just plug in the charger, but I think it's some compatibility issues, which is a thing with USB-C that there's a spec, but the spec doesn't mean that everyone follows it exactly the same. And if you look up the problem, there's a lot of people that talk about such and such phone, which wasn't on their official list of supported devices. The charging pass through doesn't work. So uh, that's disappointing. I'd have to unplug the device from the controller and then plug that into uh, to charge it. And I, what I want is, is just to be able to at any point in time, grab it, play. So I'm gonna keep playing with them. So far, so good. Uh, just the charging thing, figure out what to do there. So I'm sitting out here. This is often my thinking spot. I'm in the garage and um, this is like kind of a playroom area that we dedicated in the garage. Uh, it's got an, uh, an arcade cabinet and a sofa and a dartboard and it's in here with the gym. And um, it's also where I moved. All of my home lab stuff. So I have the server, home lab server running here, switch, my VoIP box, and then I had a stack of Raspberry Pis. They're very old Raspberry Pis, by the way. Like 2014 original B plus Raspberry Pis. Stack of three. Uh, I think I had four actually at one point in time. I've only had one Raspberry Pi burn out on me. I think that's why I had four, and it's just three now. Um so story time. Last night, that's why I'm in my thinking chair, by the way. Story time. Last night, I'm thinking, you know, I got to fix my Pi Hole installation. It's, uh, it's on an 8 gigabyte SD card. It's been running forever. So it's been working great. For three, four years, I think it's been running for our whole home handles. All the DHCP, all the DNS, 
blocks ads wonderfully. I almost never see ads on my mobile devices anymore. My wife plays a lot of mobile games, no ads. So it works great. But it's running out of space and it's crashed a couple times in the last month or so. So I need to update it at some point in time. I need to take the SD card out. I need to uh, reflash a new one, a bigger one, 16 or 32 gigabyte SD card, add lots of space, but it's a dedicated device, dedicated DNS ad blocker. It's what it does. That's why it's on its own device. I understand I could put Pi-hole on my home lab server and then it would run just fine there, but I want to be able to take the server down. I want to be able to play with it. I want to be able to do stuff not take out the internet at the same time. So last night, I'm out here, and uh, I'm looking for some cable stuff. I got some stuff that's stashed out here. And uh, I get some people telling me in the house, internet's not working. Can't access anything. Huh. Interesting. Internet's not working. I bet you that means that that pie hole is down again. So I come over here to check it out. Sure enough, I had hit something that had caused it to get unplugged. So the whole stack, because I use a uh, power brick, like a phone charging, where it's got six or eight ports on it. Just use that to run all my Raspberry Pi instead of having individual charges for it. One plug, multiple USB, micro USB cables going into the pipes. So I'm like, this is a great time to disconnect it and just separate out that one Pi and leave that one Pi here take the other two inside, I'll work on, them on, on, on other projects. They're not actually doing anything right now. One of them just dead. Like, I wasn't using it. It's just sitting there. Another one was a Pi VPN, which I've had all kinds of problems with, and I work from home. So I don't need to access the VPN anymore. I had originally set it up because I was working outside of the house a lot. I wanted to be able to tunnel into the house and be able to use it as a v VPN. Originally, open VPN, uh, then it eventually switched to WireGuard. Worked okay. Crashes a lot. So I'm like, I'm going to take those two out. I'm going to leave the one. So it should be really fast. Unplug. Take some pieces off the top. Put the pie back. And then away it goes. Let everyone in the house know. Give me 15 minutes. So I get it disassembled. And I plug it in. And it does that thing. Because I had to change the power supply from it being the multi-port to just being a single one. So I have a single, like... Um, tablet charger that I'm just going to use that cord for. I'll be able to plug that in. I'll take the multi-port charger inside. I'll use it for these other Raspberry Pi projects and whatever else i got going on. Works great for cameras and that kind of stuff too. So I plug it in and it does the thing. It flashes red and turned off. Then it, I kind of jiggled it again. It flashed red. The green light turned on and it cut off. Shit. So then I plugged the Unplugged the cord, plugged it in, kind of fiddled with it, got it just right. Turned on, red light on, green light, solid. I just fucking nuked the SD card on this on this Pi, which I didn't have plans tonight or last night to actually go through and do the whole new installation. Instead, what I want to do is just separate the Pies because I had accidentally knocked it. Then later, come out and deal with that. This is like 10 o'clock at night. I don't want to deal with that right now. But now the SD card's nuked and everyone in the house, no internet because it's the DHCP server. It handles all the DNS requests. No one's got any internet in the house. I'm going to have to go around and manually change everyone's devices to a different access point, remove their DNS entries like it's a mess. So I've got to hurry up and get this done. But as you know, especially on the older Raspberry Pis, like I said, 2014 Raspberry Pi, flashing... Raspberry Pi OS, getting it running on the Pi, running all of the updates, and then installing Pi Hole, slow. Very slow, because it's, it's an ancient ARM processor on a single board computer. Of course it's slow. So it takes me like three hours of put the SD card in the computer, run the imager, Install the OS. After the OS is installed, get it into the Pi. Connect it, you know, upstairs in, in, in my office. Connect to the monitor and keyboard. Do the first run configuration. Expand the file system. Make sure everything's good to go. Set some overclock. These um, 
uh, stands that I have for them have heat sinks and fans. So I'm, and it's in the garage and I live outside of Seattle. So it's plenty cool enough to run some o- o- overclocking on these devices. So I set the overclock, reboot, run the update, takes forever. Then install Pi Hole, set the, set up Pi Hole with the static IP address, get it back out here, get it plugged in. Lots of devices inside of the house fucking complain because the DNS thing was a problem. So every device in the house has got to be fucking reset. That way they'll understand their new route to the internet. I didn't change anything, but just was a pain in the ass because that had gone for so long, especially in mobile devices. The mobile devices had gone so long with being connected to Wi-Fi, but no internet access that I had to like futz with them for an extended period of time in order to get them to work. So um, that was a fun scramble last night to get everything set up. It's taught me some lessons. One is, is I'm definitely going to image this card and make a duplicate image of the way that it is now. That way, just in case something like this comes up, I can flash another SD card with the same image, pop it in, be like nothing happened. Two is, is I'm glad that it's all out here because it's finicky. It's out here so no one can mess with it. No one can touch it. No one can accidentally hit it. I need to move my cables and excessive stuff that's around it so I'm not out here messing with it anymore. So, such is the life of the tech guy in the house and the self-hoster. Because you're in charge of all this stuff. And I could just let everyone deal with ads, but I'm running an ad blocker. But when the ad blocker goes down, buck stops here. I'm the one that's got to fix it up. And that could mean 10 o'clock at night on uh, Tuesday or whatever day of the week is. Yeah, Tuesday. To mad dash get this set back up. So, anyways, it all works out in the end because everything is fine. And then I also have those other two Raspberry Pis out. So I need to reassemble the uh, cases that they're in. And then uh, I have some project ideas for what I'm going to use them for. Uh, to be able to offload some tasks that I do around. Uh, be, be able to play with some other stuff. Anyways, just nice to have them around. So I'm going to go reassemble my existing Raspberry Pis into their case. <laughs>